Assalamu alaikum, my dear students. Today we'll talk about grammatical sentence, but not, I mean, like in previous classes, we uh, talked about, you know, the definition of uh, sentences, their skeleton, the basic clause patterns, and then how to expand, I mean, add flesh, you know, to the skeletons and expanding, you know, the meanings by introducing different, you know, modifiers in the sentences. And then types of sentences and passives and reported and all. But today we'll discuss some very, very important and sensitive areas of grammatical sentence. Some important issues, issues of uh, the parts of speech. I mean, issues of the subject and verb agreements, issues of pronouns, issues of adjectives and adverbs. I believe this is, you know, something very, very important. I would say lecture, and uh, I'll be expecting your, you know, very, uh, I mean, your your full attention towards uh, you, the different points. You know, we discuss. You know, you must have heard of uh, a phrase, common errors. Of course, through grammatical sentence issues, we can, of course, correct those, you know, common errors. When we say the first issue, which is very, very, very important issue, and uh, I mean everybody, of course, you know, uh, you know, lacks uh, some of its, uh, you know, uh, you know, points while writing. You know, people commit some errors regarding subject and verb agreements. When I say subject and verb agreement, what I actually mean, I mean the subject of your sentence and its verb both should agree you know with each other no matter how long is your sentence no matter how many modifiers you know you have used doesn't matter how you know far apart are your subject and verb in your sentence both have to agree you know with each other i mean if singular is the subject verb has to be singular if plural is the subject Verb has to be in plural form. This is exactly what we call subject verb agreements. There are 10, let me use a hyperbole, there are 10 commandments, you know, which uh, we need to follow, like gospel truths, not to, you know, fall for, you know, uh, those uh, adders, which we call common adders. To give you one example of subject verb agreement, when we say the plant, needs watering. Now here the subject is the plant, verb is needs watering. Plant is a singular, needs. I'm not using the word need. I have, you know, introduced S to the word need. The plant needs watering. Subject is singular, verb is singular. Both agree with each other. We say fine, correct, no problem. But if the sentence had been the plant need watering, for example. So we would have, of course, objected, you know, that the plant is a singular, you know, subject, and need without s or es, it means the verb is plural. So singular subject with plural verb, you know, does not agree. This is what actually the concept is behind subject verb agreements. Now, see, subject can be in different forms. I mean, if you remember, in one class, we talked about the functional types of subject. And over there, we talked about there were six types, and one was compound subject. I mean, if subject is, the, is in compound form, connected with the help of A and D and, for example, like Imran and Irfan, for example. Now, this is, a, this is an example of compound subject. So, what to do with the verb? Should verb be in singular or plural form. Okay, take another example. If the subject is in uh, compound form, but not connected now with and, but connected with or or nor. For example, Imran or Zishan. Now, what should be the form of the verb? Should it be plural? Should it be singular? Now, these are actually questions which uh, we'll study today in this class under subject verb agreements. Subject can be in compound form. Subject can be in collective form. So what to do with the verb? 
subject can be like uh, you know like uh, in indefinite pronoun form like everyone for example now everyone by meanings means each one of you everyone after everyone should we use singular or plural so of course we'll discuss these let's now uh, come back to our 10 you know subject verb commandments and the commandment number one Actually, by the way i i uh, i would like to tell that in this you know class especially there'll be a lot of slide work actually i'll show you the principle then i'll show you one uh, example which will be exact translation of the principle in some you know uh, functional form and then you'll see one two or three sentences which uh, of course will have certain you know problems what of course subject and verb problem and uh, then you know you and me together you know we'll try to correct you know those like on your screen rule number one or commandment number one is what make the verb agree with its subject not with the word that comes between now in this rule what it says that subject should agree with its verb there may be many you know words between your subject and your verb there may be many in the form of modifier for example there can be a prepositional for the modifier between subject and verb there can be a prepositional modifier there can be in a positive also like if you remember the bracket information maybe doesn't matter i mean if subject is in singular form the modifiers are in plural form and then comes the verb you have to make your singular verb agree with its you know singular a singular subject agree with its singular verb forget about like you know what uh, are the words in between your subject and verb this is what rule number 1 says now you can see the example the tulips now this is your subject in plural form the tulips in the pot on the balcony need watering the tulips which is subject in plural form in the pot on the balcony now these are two modifiers which are prepositional modifier one modifier with in second modifier with on in the you know pot on the balcony the tulips in the pot on the balcony now the word verb is need should it be singular or plural when the tulips are plural verb is plural so the tulips in the pot on the balcony need watering now subject and verb you know both agree forgetting about what are the words which are between subject and verb so commandment number one is what make your subject agree with its verb not with the words which come in between subject and verb you can see one more example high levels of air pollution causes damage to the respiratory tract now you have to very carefully see that high levels of air pollution you have to decide actually high levels is your subject or air pollution is your subject of course high levels is subject not air pollution so high levels of air pollution of air pollution is what this is we call like you know the words in between subject and verb so high levels this is plural subject verb has to be plural we are not going to use verb you know with respect to air pollution air pollution is a singular one so verb will be singular so cause is wrong high levels is your subject so high levels then cause so the sentence goes you can see carefully high levels of air pollution cause damage high levels plural cause plural you can see the second example a good set of golf clubs cost about eight hundred dollars again same is the problem a good set of golf clubs set is your subject of golf clubs is your subject if set is your subject it's in singular form and then verb has to be in singular form which is cost c o s t s if you see that golf clubs is your subject i mean just just assume that golf clubs is your subject then the verb you know would have been cost plural into plural but here 
club, golf clubs is not our subject. Our subject is a good set. Set is our subject. So it will be a good set costs. One more example. The governor as well as his press secretary were shot. Now in this example, the governor as well as his press secretary were shot. Subject is the governor, okay? And as well as actually mean along with. So we are not saying the governor and his press secretary. Now, had it been this way, then fine. I mean, uh, were, you know, would have been all right. But here, what we are saying is the focus is on governor, not on the both, actually. There is no equal focus on governor and the press secretary. Rather, what we are using actually, the governor as well as, no, as well as means along with. So, governor actually is a subject and then verb has to be singular. Governor, verb has to be singular. The governor was shot. Now, the, whatever are the words in between subject and verb, just ignore. Very simple thing. I repeat, no matter how long is your sentence, just take a pencil, underline subject and underline verb. Doesn't matter they're close or apart from each other. Doesn't matter. Underline them and see they agree with each other. If they agree, take my words, if they agree, 90% of your grammatical sentence problems, you know, will be all right. I mean, our major problems are subject verb agreement problems, you know. We, I mean, you know, we are quite fine with adjectives and adverbs and pronouns, you know. But when comes the subject and verb, they're like, you know, most of us collapse. So, commandment number one, subject has to agree with its verb, not with the words which come in between. Now, let's move to commandment number two or issue two or rule number two. What it says on your screen, treat most compound subject connected by and as plural. You have seen in uh, six types of uh, subjects, if you remember, there were like, you know, noun and pronoun and gerund and infinitive and noun clause and one was compound subject. I mean, two or more than two nouns or pronouns connected by a and d and, making two or three as plural. When they are plural, compound connected by and. They are plural and verb is going to be plural. Like example I have given you is, aroma and viola often jog together. Now, aroma and viola often jogs, no. Aroma and viola, plural, often jog. Jog is also pl plural. So this is how they agree. Now, one more example. Jill's natural ability and her desire to help others has led to a career in the ministry. Now, in this sentence, you see two characteristics have been given. They are different in nature. They are not same. They are different in nature. Connected with the help of and, that makes it plural. Verb has to be plural. Whereas, here we have used has, change it into have. Like Jill's natural ability and her desire to help others have led to a career in the ministry. So, this is your commandment number two. Compound subject connected with the help of and is plural. Verb is going to be plural. The third one is very interesting. Third rule. That is what compound subject, like here, connected by and, but a compound subject not connected by and now, connected by or or nor. What to do with that? For example, aroma or viola, Imran or his friends. Now, point is, should we take it also plural? No, not at all. Now, here what we do actually, first, uh, you better read the rule, then I'll explain you. The rule says, 
with compound subjects connected by or or nor make the verb agree with the part of the subject nearer to the verb yes this is something you know interesting two subjects connected by or or nor okay now verb we're going to use verb according to the subject which is nearer like the example which i gave imran or his friends now look here there are two you know subjects imran and what or his friends imran is a singular his friends is plural the rule says that verb will be according to in this case verb will be according to the subject which is nearer now imran or his friends his friends nearer to the verb and his friends will choose the verb so the sentence will go imran or his friends you know let's say you know will you know come to you know take so and so and example on your screen you can see a driver's license or credit card is required a driver's license or credit card now here we are not saying a driver's license or credit card are required because or means you know one out of these two and second thing we said verb will be according to the subject which is nearer and nearer is what credit card so credit card is singular verb is singular see one more example if a relative or neighbor are abusing a child now in this sentence if a relative or neighbor are same is the problem this is not and compound subject and means you know two together or means not two together one of these two and then we have to see which one is nearer and the nearer is singular therefore verb has to be singular so the sentence should go if a relative or neighbor is neighbor is singular is abusing a child notify the police see the next sentence neither the real estate agent nor her clients now the real estate agent estate agent is singular nor her clients now, clients is plural and then comes the verb so clients is nearer the verb and clients going to decide the verb clients is plural verb is going to be plural check the sentence neither the real estate agent nor her clients were not was were why because clients is plural and clients are going to choose the verb plural subject plural verb now three you know cardinal principles we have studied number 1 is subject and verb should agree with each other not you know with the words which come in between could be in the form of modifiers number 2 we see that subject if it's in compound form connected with the help of and take it a plural verb has to be plural but if there is a compound subject connected with the help of or or nor then what then the verb will be according to the nearer most subject if it's singular verb singular plural verb plural and please keep in mind or and nor mean one out of these is it clear let's see the fourth principle of subject verb agreement on your screen you have treat most indefinite pronouns as singular indefinite pronouns like uh, each every either neither anyone no one everybody so these are actually some examples of indefinite pronouns indefinite pronouns are singular i mean don't take them this way that when we say everybody stand up of course my when i my address is to each one of the person sitting in this room everybody stand up but 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 it's it's uh, agreement with the verb is you know little different when i its meanings are each one of you but it's an indefinite pronoun okay and uh, we are talking about individuals actually not people in collective form individuals like each one of you 
So everyone, it's an indefinite pronoun. It is to be taken as a singular. So if subject is singular, plural is going to be singular. Like on your screen, you have an example. Everyone on the team sports the coach. Everyone, singular, sports the coach. Look, meanings like in team, let's say there are 12 players, and we are saying everyone sports each one. I mean, from meanings point of view, we are talking about the individuals, one, two, and six, and eight, and 11, and 12, each one. And it's an indefinite pronoun, okay? And take it singular. Everyone sports the coach. One more example on your screen. Each of the furrows have been seeded. Very simple. Each, we're not talking about, I mean, all, each actually. So verb has to be singular, has been seeded. And the next example, none of these trades require. None of these trades, one, two, three, four, none of these trades. Meanings are, of course, I mean, all pinpointing the individual items, okay? Indifferent pronoun, none of these trades, singular, verb is going to be singular. And the sentence goes, none of these trades requires a college education. Now, this indefinite pronoun, not all of you, of course, but many of you, you know, take indefinite pronouns as plural. Like, none of these trades require, it will be a mistake. None of these trades is what? Is an indefinite pronoun. Meanings are, of course, to all, but focus is on individuals. That is why, you know, indefinite pronouns are singular. Verbs, you know, they're going to take also singular. Now, four principles, you know, you have studied. Let's go down to the fifth one. The fifth one says, treat collective nouns as singular unless the meaning is clearly plural. Now, collective nouns, for example, jury, for example, class, for example, committee, for example, army, for example, police. You know, these are collective nouns. Now, I mean, it's the use of collective noun, nouns, you know, is uh, more of conceptual in nature. I mean, if you, if you address that group collectively, then of course you'll be using collective nouns as singular. But if uh, you want to address them individually, for example, then meanings, you know, will be, I mean, then the verb, of course, will be the plural. I mean to say, you can speak this way, the police is or the police are. The class is or the class are. Now, class or police, you know, these are collective nouns. and. Uh, it depends upon you, what meanings you want. You want to address them as a group, singular, singular verb. You want to address them not as a group actually, as, you know, people inside, the members inside that group. Meanings will be, of course, plural. The police is or police are, class is or the class are. I mean, one example if I give you, just to make it rather clear, couple. That's also a collective noun. Couple is sitting in a garden. Or a couple are sitting in a garden, hand in hand, or holding each other's hand. Now, you might be wondering that how one could know that the meanings are, you know, plural or meanings are singular. I mean to say collective noun to be taken as... Uh, you know, singular or collective noun to be taken as plural. Just by looking at the verb, you know, if verb is plural, then uh, plural meanings. If it's singular, then singular meanings. No, not at all. You as a writer, make sure that you, you know, add some elements to your sentence which should denote or which should mention that here the focus is not on the collective part, 
Rather, the focus is on the individuals. I mean, not on group, but on individuals. Same sentence which I, which I quoted before. A couple are sitting in a garden. Now, if I, leave, if I, mind, if I you know, end my sentence just this much, then of course, we are wrong. I mean, a couple are sitting in a garden. There are no such elements in this sentence which could, which could you know, tell my readers that meanings here are plural. So he would, of course, say that it's a wrong collective noun to be taken as singular. So a couple is sitting, you know, in a garden. But if I add some elements, a couple are sitting in a garden holding each other's hands. Now, holding each other's hands will, of course, give my readers an idea that here stress is not on a group, but on the individuals in a group. So this is how you know, we decide uh, collective noun to be taken, taken as singular or to be taken as plural. If you come back to the slide, there you can see the singular meanings of uh, collective nouns and the plural meanings of collective noun. The first one, the class respects the teacher. Now here the class taken as a group. In the second sentence, the class are debating among themselves. Now the class are debating. Among themselves is actually that element which I was talking, you know, with you just a moment before that leaves certain elements, you know, which could give your readers an idea that here meanings are, you know, not group, but, you know, the members or the, you know, units inside. Go down to one more example. The scout troop meet in our basement on Tuesdays. So here the scout troop taken as uh, singular. The verb has to be singular, meets. And the second sentence, the young couple was arguing about politics while holding hands. Somewhat the same example, not different. The young couple were, you know, arguing about politics, holding hands. Now, holding hands may be like, you know, you know, making a chain, for example, of their hands. Here, the stress is not on the meanings as group, but the meanings as, you know, individuals of that group. So this is, you know, our principle that collective nouns to be taken as singular. If otherwise, you know, meanings are plural, then of course, going to be taken as plural. Let's go down to our next rule of subject verb agreement. Make the verb agree with its subject, even when the subject follows the verb. Now, this one is, I would say, unique, though simple. I mean, you, of course, construct such sentences where verb comes first, subject comes second. When I say, there are 10 chairs in this room, now look here, there are 10 chairs in this room. If I restructure the sentence, it would be, of course, wrong, but, you know, for understanding, it doesn't matter. There are, let's say, 10 chairs in this room. Sentence restructured. Ten chairs are in this room, which is, of course, a wrong construction, but to understand. Ten chairs is, you know, your subject. Verb is are in this room, you know, done. But this kind of idea, we express this way, there are ten chairs. Now, this is what actually, you know, the rule says, even if your verb is first, I mean, V is first, then comes subject. Even in that case, what you're going to do is subject has to go according to its verbs or verb. Example, there are surprisingly few children in our neighborhood. Here the subject is few children. Surprisingly few children. In the next sentence, there was a social worker. Now, social worker is a subject, which is a singular subject. Verb is singular, was, sentence, cannot be this way. There were a social worker, of course not, would be a wrong subject and verb both agree with each other. Subject is singular, verb is singular. Third example, at the back of the room is a small aquarium. Now, is shows that the next coming subject is, you know, singular. And of course, that is singular, a small aquarium. So this is how we have seen that it doesn't matter, you know, whether your subject is coming first or subject coming, you know, second. They should agree with each other. Let me give you one more example. If I, if I say she is wearing a beautiful dress, she, subject, singular, is 
verb singular. Both agree with each other. I can say the same sentence, construct the same sentence, restructure it. How? She is wearing a beautiful dress. A beautiful dress she is wearing. Or I can, you know, make it this way. A beautiful dress wearing she is. No matter what, no matter how I begin or end my, you know, sentence, doesn't matter. Your subject is coming first, subject is coming second, verb coming first, verb coming second. It doesn't matter. What matters to us is that subject is going to agree with its verb. That is the message. Let's go next. Make the verb agree with its subject, not with the subject complement. If you remember, basic clause patterns. We studied five basic clause patterns. The first was subject and verb, intransitive verb. The second one was subject, verb, and complement. And the rule says, make the verb agree with its subject, not with the subject complement. Like example is, a tent and a sleeping bag is the required equipment. The second example, if you see, a major force in today's economy are women as earners, consumers, and investors. Let me explain you the second sentence. A major force in today's economy are women. Now, are women, you might be wondering, because women, you know, that's plural form, the verb should be are, whereas women is what? This is actually the complement, subject complement, like subject, verb, and complement, subject complement. Women is the subject complement, and which is, of course, wrong. Verb has to agree with its subject. And the subject is what? A major force. Now, major force is in singular form. If major force is in singular form, which is a subject, verb should be, you know, singular form. And at the place of are, we are using is. Now, the sentence goes, a major force in today's economy is women. To you, it may sound strange, but this is how actually, you know, the rules are. A major force in today's economy, not are women, is women. Let's go ahead. The next rule is who, which, and that. Take verbs that agree with their antecedents. Who, which, and that. Take verbs, these are of course pronouns, who, which, and that. Take verbs that agree with their antecedents. Now, what are antecedents? Intecedents are like when I'm using pronoun, for example. Now, pronouns, antecedent will be the noun for which I'm using that pronoun. When I say Imran and then I use he, then he, he's antecedent will be Imran. Exactly the same way when we use who, which, and that, they do have their antecedents. And they, you know, should, of course, agree, you know, with each other. Like the sentences. Take a suit that travels well. Now, look here. That's antecedent is suit. That refers to what? Suit. Take a suit that travels well. That's antecedent is a suit. Suit is in singular form. Verb has to be in singular form. And suit, with respect to suit, verb is travels. Like second sentence, you can see, our ability to use language is one of the things that sets us apart from animals. Now, this sentence is very interesting. I mean, I need your attention here. Look, one of the things that sets us apart. Now, that's antecedent. Now, ask yourself, that's antecedent is one or things. I mean, what we are trying to say is our focus is on one. If the focus is on one, for example, then of course verb will be in singular form. I mean, one is a singular, verb is singular. But if that's antecedent is things, which is plural, then verb is going to be, of course, in plural form. Now, the sentence will be, our ability to use language is one of the things. Now, here... That's antecedent is not one, actually, things. I mean, this one also and many other factors, okay? That's the meaning, actually. One of the things that set 
So you got to remove s with the sets, okay? So our ability to use language is one of the things that set us apart from animals. Now you can see the second example right there. Dr. Barker knew Frank was the only one of his sons who were responsible enough to handle the estate. Now in this sentence, if you see that one of one of his sons stresses not on uh, all of his sons actually stresses on that very son which is you know which is very 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 good to his father i mean if you see the sentence again dr barker knew frank was the only one of his sons look at the making of the sentence only one of his sons as like you know if if you remember uh, we said there should be certain elements you know which uh, should decide the focus of our sentence singular meanings or plural meanings so here you know writer is giving his readers those signs from where they could understand that you know meanings i mean subject is going to be singular or plural when we say only one of his sons so don't you think these are those elements you know which we were talking you know about before so only one of his sons means singular not all sons only one of his sons so stress is on singular that's antecedent is singular one son so that's why its verb coming next is also going to be singular now let's go down to our next rule it says words such as athletics economics mathematics physics statistics and news are usually singular despite the plural form so these are you know subjects these are of course proper nouns it doesn't matter the sound uh, plural but we have to see what are the functions how do they function the function as singular verbs are going to be singular i mean we're not going to say economics are or mathematics are we'll say economics is mathematics is so this is how you know we'll be doing it our next rule is what titles of works and words mentioned as words are singular i mean again somewhat the same thing if titles for example book name for example article names okay novels plays whatever doesn't matter they are in plural form verb is going to be you know singular this is what it says let's take an example lost cities describe the discoveries of many ancient civilizations now lost cities this is let's say this is a name of a book you know lost cities and the next verb is describe or describes rule says if the titles are in plural form doesn't matter verb has to be singular so lost cities describes this is how the sentence you know will be made now we'll move towards pronouns subject verb agreement is over which uh, you know contained 10 important rules to follow exactly the same way there are certain you know rules to follow for pronouns now pronouns are what pronouns are reference words actually they have their antecedents like in subject verb subject was agreeing with verb here what going to happen you would see that pronouns should agree with their antecedents if i'm using some pronoun for some noun they both should agree here there is no role of verb actually nouns and their antecedents this you would see plus uh, you would see the order of pronouns like uh, first person second person third person pronoun if you put all these three together for example what should come first then you would see if you use pronouns in comparison for example or if you use pronouns uh, with to be verb form for example so what going to happen we'll see you know all these let's see rule number 1 towards pronouns it says make pronouns and antecedents agree like i mentioned before that noun and its antecedent both are going to agree example is the doctor finished her rounds or the doctors finished their rounds you see singular i mean her is pronoun and uh, it's a singular pronoun and uh, its antecedent is also singular there shows that you know 
the antecedent is in plural form and of course that is in plural form the doctors an example there in front of you is when someone has been drinking they are more likely to speed now in this sentence when someone and they are now someone and they they don't agree with each other someone is indefinite it is singular then the pronoun should be in his or her form right so the sentence will be when someone has been drinking you know he or she is more likely to speed someone singular pronoun singular see one more example a medical student must study hard if they now again a medical student must study hard if they not if they if he or she third example the jury has reached their decision now jury is a collective noun and here we'll be taking it as a singular the pronoun coming next will of course be a singular not there rather its decision so the jury has reached its decision so this is how the first principle goes that noun i mean pronoun should agree with the antecedents let's see the next rule towards pronouns make pronoun references clear example very interesting one when uh, aroma put the pitcher on the glass top table it broke now if you take a look of this sentence that when aroma put the pitcher on the glass top table now two things are there one is pitcher second one is glass top table and then comes you know the reference it now in this sentence it's not clear what broke actually the pitcher broke or the glass top table broke because its antecedent can be a pitcher also its antecedent can be a glass top table also so that's what actually we 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 say make pronoun references clear i mean uh, i mean when this problem actually occurs when there are two possible antecedents and one pronoun and the relationship is not made correctly that where that pronoun goes to which noun so here you have to repeat actually if the pitcher broke then the sentence should go this way when aroma put the pitcher on the glass top table the pitcher broke or if glass top table broke then you can say the glass top table broke let's see one more example tom told james that he had won the lottery now again the same problem he is a pronoun it can have two antecedent one is tom and second one is you know james now it's not clear in this sentence that this he think you know is referred to tom or james exactly the same way you know you have to repeat that very like tom won the lot lottery or james won the lottery or you can you know change it into direct speech changing it in direct speech and of course going to remove all confusions third example romeo and juliet were both too young to have acquired much wisdom which accounts for the rash actions now this one the first part which uh, talks about you know romeo and juliet you know being not that wise this uh, is not a fact i mean i mean to say absolute you know truth or what it's somebody's statement perhaps so if it's someone's statement then you have to add certain words not pronoun actually certain words over there you know which could uh, clear the meanings that this points out someone's statement for example romeo and juliet were both too young to have acquired much wisdom a statement which accounts for their rash action or you can say a fact which accounts for their rash actions so this is how you know it will be corrected let's move towards now our next rule towards pronouns and that says use personal pronouns in the proper case like example is sara confessed that the artist was her now here in this sentence 
we are, I mean, we have to see that the, that the pronoun her refers to what? I mean, Sarah confessed that the artist was she. I mean, stresses actually towards Sarah. So Sarah herself, actually. The sentence would be Sarah confessed that the artist was her. Please keep in mind when pronouns come after to be verb. This is something very, very important. Whenever you use pronouns after to be verb, I mean, is MR or was in were. Pronouns are going to be in subject form. For example, this sentence will be simply wrong if I say it is me. We often use this kind of sentences, it is me, which is wrong. Why? It is, is is actually a to be verb. Is MR, was in what is it to be, present in past forms. If it's to be verb, then the pronoun has to be in subject form. And the subject form of the pronoun is I. Sentence will be not it is me, rather it's I. Please don't forget this one. Let's see another example. My husband is six years older than me. Now this again, this is another very interesting thing. When you compare people, for example, then uh, in comparison when pronouns come, take it this way, concretely speaking, T-H-A-N, this is, uh, you know, comparative stuff. After T-H-A-N, then pronoun again is going to be in subject form. Like uh, older than me will be wrong. Older than I. So if you use pronouns in comparison, you will be using their subject, you know, forms. Another very important thing, when uh, pronouns are used, first, second and third, you know, person pronouns are used in order, for example, as a compound subject. For example, you want to use he also, you want to use I also, you want to use you also. In just order, three pronouns as subject. Then what we do actually? First should come second person pronoun, then third, then first. So the, it, it, it becomes how? Two, three, and one. Second person, third person, and first person. Like first should be you, and he, and then I. It will be wrong if you say I, you, and he, or he, you, and I. Exact order is you first, he second, and I third. So, you, he, and I are, you know, going to blah, blah, blah. So, this is how, you know, pronouns will go. One more example, taking you back to personal pronouns in the proper case. You will work with our senior producers who you will meet later. Now, who you will meet later, if you change who into whom, that would be a better choice. Go back. You will work with our senior producer, whom you will meet later. If you see the next one, the tutor who I was assigned to. Okay, so the tutor who I was assigned to, who should be changed into whom I was assigned to. And next example, whom is responsible would be wrong. Who is responsible, a better choice. And the last one, who did the committee select? Now, in this sentence, who did the committee select? We are talking about that person, you know, asking about that person. So, therefore, we should use who did the committee select. Now, these are some of the rules which uh, we use for pronouns. Some important rules I would like to revise for you, not subject verb agreement rules, pronouns especially. Like the first one, which I said, you know, that all the pronouns are going to agree with their antecedents. You have to see, like the way I, uh, I was saying in subject verb agreement, no matter how long is a sentence, underline your subject, underline your verb, and see they agree with each other. That's a wonderful test. Exactly the same way, find out which one is the pronoun, and then find out which one is the antecedent. Of course, antecedent is going to be the very noun. 
sometimes you have seen through examples possibility is that there are more than more than one nouns as antecedents they're confusing so what you have to do is very very carefully you know you have to decide that which one is the antecedent of that you know pronoun then important thing that when nouns are in uh, order like uh, all the three person pronouns are in order the formula which i have given you is second and then third and then first person pronoun like you he and i two and third important rule for pronoun i mean these are actually common errors you know which we all you know commit you know while writing third important one is that uh, when you use pronouns after to be verb this is very very common error like it's me now is is a to be verb me wrong i it's i so if you use pronoun with to be pronoun is going to be in subject form and when you use pronouns in comparison for example like you know after than for example like older than me or older than i after i mean in comparison or in than you will be using again subject you know pronouns there was one more you know problem which we studied that uh, you know if uh, like pronoun having two antecedents again the same way pronoun having singular and plural antecedent then you have to decide that uh, pronoun should go for plural or should go for singular i mean should should we use his or should we use their again find out the way we found out you know certain elements you know which uh, tell us that you know verb and subject you know in that case exactly the same way there will be certain elements in that sentence you know which you should bring to your focus and then decide pronoun should be in singular form or in plural form so these are you know some very very important rules which we need to follow and plus the study of these rules or the study of these issues you know makes us able to analyze our own writing i mean there's no need of course i mean there will be but generally speaking you know after knowing after studying after understanding all these issues the need will be of course less i mean taking your work to you know some uh, masters and requesting them i mean like you know to check your work and find out you know the problems and all i mean you know these rules you know these issues you know how to resolve these issues you can yourself analyze your writing you can yourself become a guide for yourself and of course you know uh, move towards better writing avoiding all these you know common errors in my next class we are going to talk about some more grammatical sentence issues towards adjectives and ad adverbs and of course fragments and all i hope you enjoyed today's session i know this is little more technical actually in nature and it uh, needs lot of you know extra readings of course you can use uh, handouts and you can use books to clear your concepts more uh, hopefully see you in my next class you know take care of yourself and each other assalamu alaikum khuda hafiz